is of the prayer. Today the Lord will begin with you. Your expectation shall be granted. But you will never live here the same. Just place your hands on your chest. Make a little prayer and ask the Lord to begin with you. I want you to say, Lord, begin with me. Now, quietness everywhere. Holy Ghost, I ask that you take over right now. Anywhere, any person, any person is looking up unto you, believing that you will do wonders in their life. Father, touch them now. Yeah. Holy Ghost, touch them now. Yeah. Those that are bound, lose them. Yeah. Those that are oppressed, lose them. Yeah. Those that have been afflicted, heal them. Yeah. Every contrary spirit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, pack your load. Holy Ghost, take over. Prakatayama Zuvi Kahuka, Spirit of Death. Oh, yeah, pack your load. Quickly. Spirit of untimely death. Just keep quiet, keep quiet. You will not kill that lady. Pack your load quickly, quickly. Come out of her. Enter the button, let's be quickly. Or just watch out there. We kill Holy Ghost, bring her out right in the front. Let that spirit go and come back no more. Yeah. Spirit of backwardsness. Back a look, we kill we kill Enter the bottomless spirit. Backwardness. I just watch how deliverance is going on. Spirit of untimely death. I torment you by fire, fire, fire. Whatever load somebody is carrying in that head. Whatever load of cause placed upon your family, let that cause be removed from you and the keep quiet, keep quiet, keep quiet from you and the whole family as I'm standing here now. The Lord God whom I start begin with that young man, lose him, deliver them from cause, deliver all of them, as many of them in that family, Holy Ghost take charge. Deliverance is going on. Everybody connected to cause, especially the young man I'm talking about. Whatever comes upon your family, receive your deliverance. Witchcraft spirit. Catch fire quickly. Catch fire. Come out. Come out. Come out. Enter fire. Queen. Queen of coasts. Catch fire. Marine spirit. Marine spirit, ancestral spirit, touch, catch fire, catch fire, catch fire, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire. Anywhere they initiated you, anywhere they took your name to any shrine, any temple, 
any altar wherever they took your name and did something upon your head now let that place be set ablaze and i command that you receive your deliverance and deliverance from that power from that kingdom from that power holy ghost deliver that man i'm waiting for you you will not die a day before your death something is happening there i'm still waiting for the first i'm talking about wherever you are whatever i've done consciously unconsciously to you today is the end of the evil <laughs> give that person a sign thorough deliverance thorough thorough spirit wife catch fire catch fire today you must be free whatever that is standing against you by the authority in the name of jesus i stand against them and i discharge you from that power i claim your freedom in jesus name i pray for you that moving object let it catch fire come out now that thing moving like a snake whatever moving in your body pouring water in your body cash fire cash fire you python you snake i torment you by fire fire holy ghost fire holy ghost fire every one of you you must be free <laughs> holy ghost every plant which my heavenly father did not plant in death it must be rooted off <laughs> affliction affliction of hiv be uprooted now affliction of stomach or stab of uprooted now every weakness and heaviness projected be uprooted now whatever cobwebs covering your face be uprooted now father deliver my people say them free in jesus name today you must be free as i count seven anywhere they tie your soul or tie your spirit anywhere they tie you you must be loose one loose lose lose i lose you i command we lose quickly to lose three lose four lose five lose six lose seven lose all you contrary spirit I take authority over you, spirit of affliction, spirit of death, spirit husband, spirit wife, python, spirit marine, spirit, I change you, I bind you, I cast you to abyss in Jesus' name. Precious Father, touch them one by one. Deliver them from every spirit, every spirit of power working against them. I command the spirit of be bound and be shamed and be cast to abyss in Jesus name I plead the blood of Jesus I plead the blood of Jesus I plead the blood of Jesus every initiation that is done using the blood of animal blood of human being 
anything they have said concerning your life by the blood of Jesus I cancel it and I claim freedom for you I declare you free in Jesus name my daddy he the sick deliver the praise father fight their battle father bring freedom upon everyone in jesus name touch them beyond expectation let your name be glorified prove to them today that you are god who can never change who can never lie glorify your son jesus in your life give them victory in jesus name can i hear you say amen, amen. shall we get seated with jesus then i means nothing shall be possible with jesus in our means nothing shall be possible nothing shall be possible with jesus in our means nothing shall be possible with our god in our means nothing shall be possible with our god in our means nothing shall be possible With Holy Ghost and our means, nothing shall be possible. With Holy Ghost and our means, nothing shall be possible. Remember me, remember me. Remember me, my Lord Jesus, remember me, Father, Father in heaven. Father, O oh Father in heaven. Do it for me, do it for me, do it for me. All the glory will be your own, Father. Father in heaven, do it for me, do it for me. All the glory will be your own. They will do it for you. Turn your Bible to Numbers chapter 23. Numbers chapter 23. I read verse 19. Numbers 23. Verse 19 to verse 20. God is not a man that he should lie, not a son of man that he should repent. Had he said, shall he not do it? Or had he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I receive a commandment to bless. I bless, and I cannot revise it. In Titus chapter 1, verse 2, Titus chapter 1, I read verse 2. Look at it, chapter 1 and verse 2. In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. In Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 18. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 18. That by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation 
who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. I'm talking to you on this topic. God who cannot lie. God who cannot lie. I want to let you know that something I wait for you today through to the weekends and victory is certain can I hear you say amen I say victory is sure our father in heaven has made so many promises to us in time past during our previous crusades and fulfill them since the beginning of this ministry it has been confirming the topics in all our meetings and crusades with great signs and wonders and we have never found him unfaithful nor ever changed from his promises God has remained the same. In fact, he's unchangeable God. He has never changed. Whatever he has told us, he has fulfilled it. In fact, there is nothing God has told us in this church that he has not fulfilled. Praise the Lord. If you look at the Bible in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, because of his nature, he said, For I am God. And I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. I want to let you know God has not changed. He has never changed and he can never change. So, all his promises are yes and amen in the law. And it shall surely come to pass. Is the faithful father. In First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. First Thessalonians. Chapter 5, verse 24. The Bible has this to say, Faithful is he that called you, who also will do it. God will do what he has said. Praise the Lord. God will fulfill his promises. Whatever promises God has made in the Holy Scripture, made through his servant, will surely come to pass. Take note of that. So, so long is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Be rest assured that come Saturday, 19th and 20th of this very month, Saturday and Sunday, that age long yoke in your life, that yoke must break. <laughs> Are you hearing me? I do not know the yoke they have put on you spiritually or physically. That yoke will never survive this place. It will never survive this program. So, 19th and 20th of October is for you. I said that yoke must break. Remember? In the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 8, it says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Has he changed? So, let us use the remaining days before this program on Saturday and Sunday to prepare. Praise the Lord. Withdraw from food. Withdraw from every kind of distraction, knowing what is ahead of us. Are you hearing me? Withdraw from being too busy in the office, in the market, in the business place, in the place of work. I say withdraw. 
and go into deep meditation and prayers and preparation and also evangelism. Are you hearing me? As a matter of what? Preparation. Because the Lord shall do wonders in our midst. Whatever you have been struggling over the years to be free from, no matter the yoke, I want to let you know this Saturday and Sunday is your days. And remember, life is not by struggle. The Lord will do it for you. Said in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, said, not by power or by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And the Bible says, by strength shall no man prevail. So, I want to let you know that it is not that you work too much and you know, labor more than everybody, spend much time in the market or, you know, run around that make you to be free from that yoke. It is the work of the Spirit of God. In this program, prepare the Lord will visit you. And your life shall never be the same in Jesus' name. So it's time for us to come to this place of evangelism and they go out in mass or also do personal evangelism. It's time for us to fast and pray in preparation and ensuring purity inside and outside. And when this is done, as a matter of preparation, the Lord will visit you. In the book of um, Joshua chapter 3 verse 5, somebody should look at your Bible, Joshua chapter 3 verse 5. I'm assuring you, God will do wonders in this place. But let's make sure, let's ensure preparation on every side. Joshua chapter 3, I read verse 5, and Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. He see you. Get ready, God will visit you. I say Saturday and Sunday, ensure purity. Make sure that nothing is standing between you and God. So that when the Lord shall come, you will not see any iniquity in you and turn away. And so, as we prepare, make sure you prepare inside and outside. The Bible says, without holiness, no eyes shall see the Lord. I'm assuring you as we prepare, come Saturday and Sunday, the Lord will break that yoke in your life. Your life can never be the same in Jesus' name. So, I don't know what you are going through, but the days ahead, beginning from today, belongs to you. We shall celebrate your miracle. And you will testify. Because our God is able to do all things. Do you believe it? Honestly, he will do it for you. You will testify. People that knew you before will ask you, where did you go? They will ask you, what happened? Take me to where you get this kind of breakthrough and the, your yoke was broken. And I'm assuring you, we shall testify in Jesus' name. So today, we shall have a test of what the Lord is about to do in this today's program. And what the Lord is about to do for us, as we consider the flowing subheadings, I say which I have the first test. As many of you that are here today, I congratulate you. You'll be the first partaker of what God is about to do. I say the Lord will do it for you. And you shall testify. So we shall consider the flowing subheadings. One, examples and reasons. Two, our response and the benefit. Let's go to point number one. Examples and reasons. Right from the beginning of the world. Please take note. And from the beginning of this ministry, from the beginning of the world, and from the beginning of this ministry, there are so much or so many examples which are pointing to the fact that 
Our God is the covenant keeping God. Are you hearing me? Whenever he makes promises to any generation of any promise to any person or nation, whenever he makes promises, honest, honestly, he will keep to it. He will never, never alter it. He will bring it to pass. He made promise of blessing Abraham and giving him a son even in his old age. I want to ask you a question. Did he fulfill it? Please answer me. If you look at the Bible in the book of um, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Genesis chapter 12. Please look at verse 1. Chapter 12, verse 1. I read Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Now, the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, on the land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and cause them that cause thee, and in thee shall all the nations of earth be blessed. That was a promise. I want to ask you this question. Did he fulfill it? Please answer me. I want to let you know God fulfilled that promise. In fact, if you look at the book of Genesis 24 verse 1, please open your Bible. Genesis 24 and verse 1. And I read Genesis 24 verse 1. And Abraham was old and was speaking in age. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. How many things? Which means all the promises of blessing him and giving him a son, everything had been fulfilled. I want to let you know, God is the covenant keeping God. He fulfilled his promises from the beginning of this world to today. All the promise God has ever made to man, he has fulfilled them. Do you believe it? And so, take note, he promised to give the promised land to the whole Israelite. Did he fulfill it? Please answer me. I say God promised the Israelites to give them the promised land. And in fact, he fulfilled it even after 430 years. I say God fulfilled it. Did he? If you look at the book of Exodus chapter 3, I read from verse, from verse 8. Or let's read from verse 6. Exodus chapter 3. From verse 6, open your Bible and read. And he said, from verse 6, moreover, he said, I am the Lord God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt. I have heard their cry by reason of their task masters, and I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and, out, and to bring them all out of that land, unto a good land, and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusite. Here was the promise. I'm bringing you out of Egypt. And I'm taking you to the seven hidden nations. I want to ask you this question. Did God fulfill it? And Sammy now. Yes. If you look at the book of Exodus chapter 12 verse 40. Let's see. Exodus chapter 12. Please open your Bible. I am proving the facts. That you are God, our God, 
is the covenant keeping God. But whenever you make promises to man, he will fulfill it. Exodus chapter 12, verse 40. I read. Now, the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwell in Egypt was 430 years. And it came to pass. At the end of the 430 years, even the self same day, it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. Despite the opposition of Pharaoh and the armies of Pharaoh and the magicians of Pharaoh, they could not stop the program of God. He delivered them at the day that God has said the 430 days. He did not pass one day. That same day, the Lord brought them out and took them to the promised land. He see you. Whatever God has promised you will surely come to pass. I am very sure. I know that a promise has been made to us very shortly on Saturday and Sunday. What is that promise? That yoke must break. Whether you believe it or not, well, God is not a man. What you have decided to do, he will do it. You cannot stop it. Devil cannot stop it. Nothing can stop it. I'm assuring you that you must break. That is a promise of God. And it's a covenant keeping God. And it's God who cannot utter the word that gone out of his lips. It's unchangeable. God is the faithful God. And so victory is certain. I don't know what you are going through. Who is standing on your way and say, come and make it. Let me see. You come and move forward. You come and be free. Let me see. Am I showing you stand there on Sunday? God is giving you victory. Because God has said it and it will surely come to pass. I said a lot of promises have been made by God and fulfill them. Of course, he equally promised us the Messiah of us I want to ask you a question did the Messiah come answer me now he promised us that Messiah shall be born and he shall come even from Genesis chapter 3 and through to the whole Bible it by reminding us that Messiah is coming the Savior is coming the seed of woman is coming to bruise the head of Satan did he come answer me now and so that promise God made it and fulfill it. If you look at your Bible, let's read from Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9 from verse 6. Please open your Bible. That was the promise, the prophecy made of what God is about to do. And, and I'm showing you, I'm assuring you that God who cannot fail, who cannot lie, fulfill that promise. In chapter 9 verse 6, I read... For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David, and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment with, and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. He has made a promise and he will bring it to pass. No matter who is saying no, no matter the all the enemies of God, the devil or demon and human agent saying, let us see how Messiah can come. Of course, you know what happened? That, you know, Herod was very angry that a king shall be born. And then this is going to be a threat to his kingship and kingdom. That a king shall be born. And in fact, Herod killed over 2,000 children. In order to kill Jesus, did he kill him? Did he stop the program of God? 
after wasting the life of the whole children, Jesus lived on. And Jesus fulfilled his ministry. The Messiah was born. And he fulfilled his ministry. Look at the Bible in the book of Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1 from verse 21. Matthew chapter 1. I read verse 21. And he shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. What happened? For he shall save his people from their sin. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted, God is God with us. Now this was the prophecy fulfilled that Jesus the Messiah shall be born and his name shall be called Emmanuel God meaning God is with us did it come to pass yes of course look at chapter 2 in Matthew chapter 2 Jesus was truly born I read verse 1 now when Jesus was what Born in Bethlehem in Judea in the days of Herod the king. Behold, there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and have come to worship him. Which means Jesus was born. Was he born? And that is the promise, the promise for fear. Look at verse, verse 9. And when they had had the king, the king wanted to, you know, deceive them and say, show me, please, wise men, when you saw the star, when you have seen that son, uh, that Messiah, show me so I can worship him. But now, look at what happened here. When they had had the king, they departed. And though the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with who? Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped who? The little Jesus in the hand of the mother, the mother Mary, they worship him to show that he is the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the Messiah, the Savior of the whole world. In fact, the Bible said they worship him. As small as he, he was in the hand of the mother, they worship him, but something happened. Praise the Lord. Of course, you know that he was the threat to the kingship of who? That's what Herod thought. Are you going to rule physically because of the prophecies of the prophet? And then Herod was angry. Let's see what happened in verse 13. Please look at verse 12. And be warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod. They departed into their own country another way. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. And be thou there until I bring the word for for Herod will see the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt and was there until the death of Herod that might be fulfilled which was spoken of the law by the prophet saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Now look at verse 16. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of, his, of the wise men, was a seething rod and sent forth, he sent his killers, his armies, and slew, take note of that, all the children that were born in Bethlehem, 
in the coast thereof from two years old and under according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise man he killed children that from two years under over two thousand looking for who to stop the program of god did he the bible made us understand that herod died and the program of god continued i want to let you know and if herod that is standing on the way saying let's see how the yoke we break that herod will not survive from now to saturday to sunday judgment of god will come upon the herod that the promises of god must be fulfilled that that yoke must break is sealed oh, god has determined nothing can revise it you see you i don't know how long you have suffered and who placed the yoke on you honestly that yoke must break do you hear me yoke of evil habit yoke of cause yoke of affliction yoke of poverty yoke of demonic possession yoke of you know barrenness or rising and falling whatever yoke they put on you my friend begin to wish it bye bye it shall not survive did you hear me he see you you shall fulfill your years he see you victory is starting for you he see you after this program we shall celebrate your testimony that yoke must of course you understood that language we didn't say that yoke may break we didn't say that yoke will break we didn't say that yoke can break i, I hope you're understanding the message we didn't say that well that yoke will try to break the word of God and promise of God for you concerning that yoke of barrenness, that yoke of poverty, of sorrow, of affliction, the word, the yoke of course upon you. The word of God is that that yoke must break. <laughs> Did you hear me? As soon as you step into here on Saturday and Sunday, many angels will be on ground in fact the spirit of god whom i serve with all my heart he will take over me he will take over the congregation and there shall be great oppression they will go to your village they will go to any shrine any temple any altar they shall go to wherever any man any woman any spirit is holding you your image will go there and scatter it and break and bring you out that yoke must break are you getting ready so the promise was made and the promise fulfilled the messiah was born and fulfill his ministry he see you what god said concerning you must surely come to pass whether you believe it or not that is your business whether you believe it or not me because i believe that's why i'm standing here and my faith is greater than your doubt what i believe concerning you will surely come to pass when the messiah came he made this statement he said for god so loved the world and he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life he also said for the son of man he is come to seek and to save that which was lost and at the end of the ministry he said it is finished oh sisters and brothers when the lord begins a project he will finish it 
I don't know what you are passing through, but your time has come. Victory is sure. Do you agree with me? Well, I will celebrate with you. He promised provision, deliverance, and healing, and protection, and blessings unto his people. Blessings, all blessings. And the Lord forfeit them. This God is so good, so powerful. Nothing hinders him. He has all the resources. He's the omnipotent God. In fact, his self-existence. In fact, everything that we're talking about comes from him. So it's not a want of what to use to perform his word. It has the power. It has all things. The Bible said, God has spoken once to us have I had this. That power belonged to God. My friend, he owns power. And he's going to put the power at work. Oh my, listen to me. I want to let you know that what will happen here on Saturday and Sunday, you will not imagine it. You don't hear me. His power will be at display. Oh my God. <laughs> he see you. That your sickness or your yoke is a small thing. He will use as experiment to demonstrate his power. Of course, he said, Who will set thorns and barriers before me? That's what he said. In the book of Isaiah 27, verse 4, he said, Who will set thorns and barriers before me? He said, I will walk through them and burn them with fire. If you set anything I, or before him and say, God, come and pass. As God come through it, he set them ablaze. He see you. Saturday and Sunday belongs to you. I, I can see you jubilating already. Praise the Lord. The Bible said in the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. Look at the Bible. It said, but my God shall supply all your needs. How many? All your needs. According to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. How many things will he supply? From A. I'm not hearing you again. From A to Z. Minus nothing. Did you hear me? My sisters and brothers, he see you. All this struggle and running up and down, there's nothing he can make up. It's just by grace. It's just God that can do it. No man. And I'm assuring you, your story, everything about your life must change. I don't know what your enemy has said. But I'm giving you announcements, information from above. And everything from above is above all. Are you hearing me? The information I'm giving you is not new super, it's not radio, it's not television. It's not the information of the world. This one is from above. Are you hearing me? And the Bible says God will bring the counsel of the hidden to naught, but the counsel of the Lord, that shall start. Now, what I'm telling you here is a word of decree. Every one of them must surely come to pass. You see you, that yoke must. I don't know who put the yoke on you. I laugh at them, and I laugh at their, their yoke. Praise the Lord. I will show you why that yoke is there. Amen. I'm just going to show you through a particular message. I'm going to announce you some messages here. And then, being the promises of what he has made before and fulfill them. And along the line, I will explain to you why that yoke is there. Praise the Lord. So, God made the promise of delivering us, healing us. When Jesus came, he demonstrated the power. In Matthew chapter 4, let's see. Matthew chapter 4. And verse 23, chapter 4, verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, 
and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people and his fame his news went throughout all syria and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse disease and torments and those which were possessed with devils and those which were lunatic and those that had the palsy and he healed them all the whole problem he rolled them away in Matthew chapter 12, verse 15, look at the Bible. 12 and verse 15. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from them, and great multitude followed him. What happened? Please complete that word. What happened? He hid them all. No, without exception, everybody was healed. I'm telling you in this place, Today, beginning with today, Saturday and Sunday, everybody shall be healed. Spirit, soul, and body. Your marriage shall be healed. Your health shall be healed. Your business shall be healed. Your career shall be healed. You see, yo, your heart that is filled with sorrow, no joy. That is dry. God will heal that heart. Joy will come upon your heart. The heart shall be fertile to receive from God in Jesus' name. So he healed how many people? He healed them all. Today, Saturday, and Sunday, everybody must be, including who? You mean it? Praise the Lord. Everybody must be here, including you. Everybody yoke must be broken. I am very, very sure. Not by struggle. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, in this ministry, in the Lord choosing charismatic revival movement, we have been enjoying his blessing through his topics, his promises. And whenever that topic comes, oh, he will confirm it. Because they are the word of God, the promises of God, the covenant, and it will surely come to pass. What kind of topic have we been enjoying? We had the message that said, do the will of God and prosper. Those who have been doing the will of God, God prospered them in this church. Two of us. And then that promises was fulfilled. So many people, God has prospered them. And then there was a topic, there come a world, mightier than all. And we have gone through state and through nature to that topic. God confirms it. That he is, he has no rivalry. He is the one mightier than all. He made impossibility to become possible. And then we also went to the topic. He came and gave us a topic that says dominion over the mighty. And then that was the thing that caused problem in 2013 because all of them rose up and said how can he be the mighty and they began to talk and then formulated some agent an agent to make um, made their um, you know their radio cassette for them and after the agent all of them began to suffer the effect everywhere our god is baba and then he gave us the message the road that blows on the end of all strife. That is why all the noise they made, they look at the choosing, choosing was blossoming, and then their trouble stop. All of them close their mouth. And instead of them continuing their problem, and they are now joining us and saying, God is good in choosing. <laughs> Did you hear what I say? The road that blows on. That road of Aaron, that booted, the road that blows on, is the end of what? 
Praise the Lord. Our God, na Baba. God of choosing his word. His unchallengeable God. Unquestionable. Our God is the one that has no rivalry. Praise the Lord. He see you. Get ready from today to Saturday and Sunday. Your story shall be rewritten. And so he gave us a message. All these were promises that we know from heaven and they came to pass. He gave us a message that said, God has the answer. And when they were making noise in 2013 and 14, we were wearing it in our body everywhere. We're not talking to them, we're not challenging them. The topic in the air from everywhere is that why you are making noise? What to say is what? God has the answer. Why they were making noise and watching V and turn, you know, watching CD. We we go on the road moving around. We're not talking. Just if you look at us, you see, God has them. And they were watching us. And they were making their noise. And then anywhere a choosing pass, he said, God has them. And that answered all the questions and all the persecution and all the trial. That topic is silenced the whole time. Praise the Lord. At the end of their noise, he gave us a topic. It is over. That anybody that tries again, trouble. And since that time, they have been bringing them here in the wheelchair. Bringing them here with story because after they have spoken, God will paralyze them. Closed their mouth. Some of them came with deaf and dumb. And they are spoken. God closed their mouth permanently. Of course, you are seeing what has been happening here. We we'll carry them in the way by the Carry them in the way. Uh, bring them here. They were just telling. So one was telling my mouth, my mouth, my mouth. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. One was falling down, I said, my mouth, this is my mouth, this is my mouth. Because it is over. So you don't open your mouth, if you open, God will close it. Praise the Lord. This is my promise, is they came to pass. Now, I want to let you know, shortly after that, God gave us a message. He says, time for God's favor. And we're enjoying favor, favor from above. That you, they will shoot you a gun, it can't enter. They will literally bring their knife and try it. Instead of knife entering you, you to kill them. Our God, na Baba. Time for God's favor. Everywhere we go, we had favor with every human being. Have favor with God. Now, listening to me, it came to pass. And then after that, God gave us a message. Time for God to prove his power. And then everywhere it was, you know, power display. Anywhere we go, power display. Everywhere we charge with miracle signs and what? Wonders. After that, he says he's the God of miracle signs and what? Wonders. Praise the Lord, our God, na Baba. He also came with a message that says that what I told you before, as I'm going to you know, explain it to you. He gave us the title that his wonders may be multiplied. That's why he allowed the trouble you are going through, so that he will show his wonders. He see you. That yoke your life is that his wonders may be what? Multiply. I don't know the problem you are going through. God will multiply his wonders by taking that yoke off you and your family. People shall know the Lord. People shall see his wonders. Let somebody say amen to that. 
And then he gave us the message titled, What God Had Determined Shall Be Done. Answering every human being, bringing everything to pass. And then he gave us a message, God will make us to rejoice. I will not rejoice. Did you see as I'm talking? Did you see me as somebody? You, of course, can see my face. You can, can see the smiling face. Is he not making us rejoice? And then after that, he gave us message. God has power to do this or that. My friend, there are, there are messages are too many. Is it not better I leave this? But I'm telling you, all these messages he gave us was, you know, the promises from above. And he came from God who cannot lie. And now he's giving us a message that that yoke must break. Above all the message, message count that we have, I would have been you know, telling you the messages one by one. And when you listen, you know that they have a message. They came from above. Praise the Lord. So now that God has promised us, all these promises that He made here, He fulfilled them. All these messages, a lot of testimonies everywhere. Am I right? I say, you know, this crusade we have had through these messages, testimonies are bound. Or the confirmation of his power and the fact that he cannot lie through of us so long he's unchangeable god be rest assured that in this crusade on saturday and sunday he will break your yokes and that everyone who will be here on saturday and sunday because he said in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, I am God and I change not. Has he changed? In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, he said, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Has he changed? Which means that you must surely do what? I didn't hear you again. Sister. Yoke of barrenness must break. Brothers, yoke of struggling, yoke of rising and falling, yoke of poverty, that yoke must break. Yoke of generational cause. I've been following your family. I'm following you anywhere you go, wherever you go. That cause will appear and everything will tumble. That yoke must break. How many of you agree? In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 32, verse 27, let's read Jeremiah 32, verse 27. Please open your Bible. It says, and I read, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? No. My brother, answer this question. No. The Lord said, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Now, let me ask you, what is the small yoke you are carrying? In fact, that day, as soon as you cross this compound, that it will disappear. I say that thing you are looking at as a heavy yoke before God is nothing. Are you hearing me? This God I'm talking about is the awesome being of heaven. This is the great God, the one that is above all. 
my friends, your problem cannot stand him. He <laughs> see that you are going through and you are struggling and sweating. There is no point again. Just come, just come. Wherever you are watching me, hearing me all over the world, just come, come. Don't be at your home. Come here on Saturday and Sunday. Come and see the Lord in action. Are you hearing me? The God I'm talking about is the God who cannot lie. God who cannot fail. God that makes impossible to become possible. Did you hear me? When he begins, oh my people, listen to me. I don't know your problem, but the problem you have, as long as I'm concerned, is no problem. In fact, all of you that I'm seeing here, I don't see any problem in you. Did you hear me? That thing that you are calling problem, just air that passed through your body, the thing will disappear. Yeah. I say air, air. Just as I'm talking, a breeze will blow on your body. Ooh. That is when that thing is taken away. Yeah. Do you believe it? I say you have no sisters. Why are you worried? Why do you think your problem is big? What you have there is nothing. You don't have, in fact, you don't have problem. I may, it may, I may, I may I just ask you to laugh at the end of the service. You laugh three times and go home. And the problem will go, but go forever. I am talking of the great God. Hey, do you know him? When he descended upon Mount Sinai, the Bible said the mountain quake. The mountain began to quake. And then the Bible said Mount Sinai was all together on smoke, on fire. Because God came down and the mountain couldn't carry God. That is God I'm talking about. When the mountain, when the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai, mountain, Mount Sinai was shaking. And then fire began to burn. That is the God I'm talking about. When he entered, when Paul and Silas started praising him, praising him, earthquake came. He came down with earthquake. And the prison, everything was broken to pieces. I'm talking about the great God. That is the one I'm talking about. You're talking about, about uh, uh, HIV, cancer, diabetes. That, that, that are not problem. Poverty, there are no problem. Barriness, there are no problem. What is it? Those things are nothing. Did you hear me very well? You have nothing as problem. Do you believe it? Now, he is not happy over what you are going through because he's a good God. He loves you so much. And the enemy has been messing you up, making you to think that you are orphan. You are not an orphan. <laughs> you have a father. Choosing people. <laughs> you have a father. Do you agree with me? We have a father that will never, never fail me. We have a father. Oh, he will never fail. Throughout all ages, he will never, oh, he will never fail. Oh, Jesus is the Father. 
Fill me up. I will never fail. Fill me up. Oh, oh, you will never fail. to that message that say we have a father listen to me you are not an orphan let no man threaten you if the man continue after this program the man or the woman or that being is looking for trouble he cannot be able to carry sister you have a father. He's jealous of you. He loves you. Brothers, I say he loves you. If you look at the book of Nahum, Nahum chapter 1, I read verse 2. God is jealous. And the Lord revenged, he will revenge you. The Lord revenges and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries. He reserves a rod for his enemies. Oh, problem is coming to the enemies of God. Look at what happened. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord has his way in the wild wind and in the storm and the clouds are the dust of his feet he rebuked the sea he make it dry and dried up all the rivers merchant languishes camel and the flower of Lebanon languishes the mountain the mountain please look at verse 5 the mountain does what what the bible says so says what did the Bible said in verse 5? Hey, that's what happened to Sinai. When Sinai saw him, he quake. Quake. Because the Almighty, the Almighty, mighty to serve, mighty in battle, mighty to heal, mighty to deliver, mighty to do all things, descended upon mountain. The mountain will be mixed like a wax. Praise the Lord. Look at that verse 5. The mountain quake at him, and he, the he is does what? Met. And the earth is what? Bond at his presence. Yea, the world and all that dwell therein. Who can stand before his indignation? And who can abide the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire, and the rocks are what? thrown down by him he see you every rock blocking you the Lord will throw them down every hill that stood on your way 
this time the heel will melt every mouth that I say come and pass that mouth will quick and vanish away he see you God is jealous of you because he created you in his own image and likeness and he wants to take pleasure in you at all times therefore any yoke by the enemy it must make like a was say amen so I want you to get ready because it is your turn to testify the Bible said in verse 7 the Lord is good and a stronghold in the day of trouble and he knoweth them that trust in him do you trust in him the Lord will give you victory what did I say that takes you to point number two our response and the benefit we have seen that our God cannot lie can he he has proved himself from the beginning of this war till now and even from the beginning of this ministry till now God of heaven has proved himself he has kept his promises in all our fellowships and all in and all our crusades God has kept his promises so be rest assured that he will finish the work will he he see you I don't know what you are going through please stop crying it is that his wonders may be what that thing you are going through is that his wonders may be multiplied so that thing can never survive this program say amen in Isaiah chapter 43 verse 10 Isaiah chapter 43 I read from verse 10 he are my witnesses says the Lord and my servant whom I have chosen that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he before me there was no God formed neither shall there be after me I even I I am the Lord and beside me there is no savior i have declared i have said i have showed when there was no strange god among you therefore he are my witnesses says the lord that i am god yea before the day was what happened i am he and there is none that can deliver out of my hand i will walk and who shall let it who shall revise it who shall hinder it so your matter is settled do you agree with me in first samuel chapter 3 verse 12 first samuel chapter 3 i read verse 12 first samuel chapter 3 and verse 12 and it says in that day i perform against the light things which i have spoken now I'm much interested in the letter, letter standard concerning his house when I begin what happened I will also make a end you see God has drawn a program he will bring it to pass and what is the program does he have power to break you answer me now does he have power to execute his program answer me now he see you no matter the years are counting for delay in marriage is not for you you will surely marry they say you are good for nothing you cannot build a house you don't have a car that is stories as I finish with you one day will settle the case they will ask you who owns this house they will ask you, are you a driver? Who owns this new car? They will tell them to wash you and see whether the way you are behaving, like, are you like a driver? The people that mock you and say, hey, look at you, you are good for nothing. They will know that God is the Almighty. 
Are you hearing me? Apostle Paul said, I can do all things. How many things? He see you, you will perform. You shall prosper. You shall make it in life. You shall fulfill your years. Nobody will kill you untimely. That sickness will not survive. That yoke must break. Are you getting ready? Is it not better I round up quickly? Because we're waiting for a great day. There's no point of talking too much today. Let me see. I'm taking it to JJJ because a great day is coming. C can I hear you say amen? amen? So I think the best thing for me to do is to round up because we have a great day coming. A day of action. A day of demonstration. A day of signs and wonders. A day of miracle. A day of demonstration. You see you, my friends, that you must break. <laughs> Let me find, are you among those who trust in him? He will prove himself you are alive. <laughs> Can I hear you say amen? <laughs> so every one of us must believe him. Prepare and invite others to come. With all assurance, please, invite them with what? That something definite will happen. That their yoke must invite them with all assurance. Are you here? Compare them to come. Bring the blind, the deaf, the dumb, the paralyzed, the those that have stroke or cancer or diabetes or barrenness or cause or you know poverty. Bring them to. Don't miss it, the Lord. Are you hearing me? Don't say, I will not take this problem to go because I don't know whether he can do it. My friend, bring that problem to come. Are you hearing me? Bring all of them, including this, your small problem. Because some of you, all of you, all of you that are here have small, small, please problem. Please. That only laugh, laugh, laughing will solve it. <laughs> are you hearing me? You are, you are my witness that here, all the when I say, all the people that have HIV laugh three times and they go for tests. All of them laugh three times. How many came back? 27 came back with testimony of HIV canceled. Just laugh three times. <laughs> so this one is a bliss problem. You see, yo, you see this hardship you are suffering is artificial is that his wonders may be multiplied. You see this thing that is there that it appears that it refused to go. It will go. <laughs> Do you hear me? What is that that can stand before the almighty the, all, hey, the almighty God? He see you. That sickness will go. That trouble will go. Victory is starting for you. Do you agree with me? You see, you, I don't know what your lost. They collected in a dream from you. I don't know why they throw you in the night. That place will vomit you. Suddenly, you are riding car in the night, and the, the car disappears. And sometimes they collect money from you and they collect you, collect this. Whatever they collected from you, they must bring it back. <laughs> Somebody was giving me testimony yesterday. <laughs> was giving me testimony yesterday. They said, Pastor, that somebody collected keys from the hand in the dream. Praise the Lord. That was yesterday. He was sharing the testimony. He said, somebody collected kids from his hand in a dream. And then when he came here, I said, whatever they collected from you, yeah, collect it back. And then he said, he mentioned the name of that person. He said, give me my key. And collected the key. He said, in the night, the same night, like, that is, the, that night of clock, like, that thing happened yesterday. The, today, being Thursday, when I preach, he said, the same night, the person gave him the key back.
Don't say it doesn't matter. What they collected from you matters. They will bring it back to you. Can I hear you say amen? So, let me not take your time because today is just a preparation. Let me not. It's not the actual day. But this problem you brought here, God will give you a sign. Say amen to it. So, invite others with assurance and every yoke must break on 19 and 20, Saturday and Sunday. It's at hand. We must come with hope and expectations and assure our invitees the same. Remember, in the next three days, it will happen. So, be prepared and prepare others and bring them to come. As we live here today, we should go straight to where we can find them and invite them to come. Did you hear me? Our goal will begin with every one of us that is here today. So that we will have our, our something. We have something. We shall have something to testify on that day. That great day. Something happened in the Bible. In the old time. Gideon was saying, we are if God be God that God should that is he was saying where are the miracles which our father told us of by God for him it's like the miracles were no more and Gideon was saying if God let me read it in the Bible please let's go to Judges chapter 6 he was trying to find where are those miracles. Let's see it. Because there is something that you need to understand through that. That thing which Gideon said, chapter 6. I want to read from verse 12. Give the book of Judges, chapter 6. And the angel of the Lord, hey, take a note, appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Uh, this is a, a, you know announcement the angel gave him. He said, God is with you, mighty man of valor. God is with you. We are talking to who? Gideon. Let us hear the answer of Gideon. And verse, look at that place. Verse 13. And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this thing befalling us? And where be all his miracles which our fathers told us of? That is the given for you. You are telling me God is with me. And he said, if God would talk, why is all this thing happening to us? And then where are those miracles that our fathers told us of what God did? And now you begin to mention some of the look at this place, look at the place. And he said, hey, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us in the hand of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent thee? You know what constitutes might? This man understood the stories that the father told him. Their father told him of what God did, how he brought them out of Egypt, how he did great wonders and miracles. And he doesn't say, where are those miracles? And so, so the angel said, for the father to remember that God did this, now go with that might. That miracle that God did, he will do it again. He will use it to do it. He said, go in that might. He see you that is here today. That is saying, where is those miracles? Where is those things that God did, the promises of God? Today, I want you to have in your mind, with all I have told you here, which God did, let it constitute might. Let it bring faith in you. And by this faith in you, 
today and Saturday and Sunday, you will possess your possession. <laughs> Do you hear me? So it's going to constitute a might. It's going to make your faith to be strong and powerful. And the Sunday and Sunday, you will be the first partaker. <laughs> Even beginning with today. That miracles I've told you which God did before. I told you the topics and what God did before. I'm assuring you he will do it again. <laughs> that you must pray. Do you agree? I say God will do it again. As the Lord began with Gideon in time past. Because of what the Midianites had done to them. And Gideon remember what God did. And God said, you are the one I'm going to begin with. I'm assuring you, he will begin with us today. <laughs> and every problem and yoke you brought here, ask the Lord a sign to prove what will happen here on 19 and 20. Are you hearing me? I don't know the problem you brought here. Ask God a sign. Did you hear me? Show me a sign to, you know, that you are going to break a, all the yoke. Start from me today. Show me what? I didn't hear you again. It's like, like some of you are sleeping. Are you sleeping? Wake up, wake up. Look at Isaiah chapter 7 from verse 10. I read Isaiah chapter 7. And from verse 10. Verse 10. Moreover, the Lord spake unto, spake again unto Ahaz, saying, As the a sign of the Lord, like God, as it either in the depths or in the height above. Who said that? God said, Do what? Ask me a sign. Will you ask a sign? Look at what the man did. That has, he has a fear of God too much. And I have said, I will not ask. Neither will I do what? Tempt the Lord. He doesn't want to ask. So I don't be tempting the Lord. But look at what followed. And he said, Hear ye now, O house of David. Is it a small thing for you to weary man? But will you worry my God also? Therefore, the Lord Himself will give you a sign. Did you hear me? Behold, the virgin shall conceive and be a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. The point is whether you want to ask a sign or not, God Himself will do what? I didn't hear you very well. Whether you want sign, you want to ask sign or not, God Himself will give you a sign. And if you wish to ask, ask, it shall be given to you. Seek, you will find. Knock, the door shall be opened unto you. But if you say you will not ask, will not knock, God Himself will give you a sign. Did you hear me? Are you getting ready now? I want to conclude as a sign. What do I say? If you say you will not ask, no problem. God himself will give you a sign. Concerning that yoke which you have carried over the years, which you have been suffering, and people are asking you, where is your God? And people are mocking your family. All of you are carrying Bible. And I'm making caricature and saying, uh, you know, why are you into this problem? My friends, God will give you a sign. All the people that mock you, they will let her bow down before you. <laughs> Do you hear me? All the people that love your family, all of them will come to, you know, they will come to your family and they begin to do what? They will begin to, they will bow before your family. Can I hear you say amen? 
You know that these unbelievers, they talk too much. They mock people of God because they don't know our God. I don't know how they have mocked you and insulted you. My friend, God will give you a sign. You can't remain in that problem anymore. If you believe me, say amen. God himself will do what? Are you ready now? Are you ready? You need to ask a sign. Eh? Okay. If you are not ready, God himself will do what? That's where I'm drawing conclusions. So, for those who are sinners and backsliders and compromisers, repent, confess your sins, and promise God no more. Believe that Jesus died for you, shed his precious blood for you, and we are buried. And on the third day, he rose again for your justification. Believe it. And I invite Jesus to your heart as a Lord, as a personal Savior that shall be saved. Can I hear you say amen? amen. There is something I want to remind you. A Christian is not a sinner. And a sinner is not a Christian. The Bible says so in 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. Let's read. The Bible says, He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. That they might destroy the works of the devil. So it is very clear. Verse 8, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8 says, A sinner is not a Christian. Verse 9 says, A Christian is not a sinner. The question is, What is sin? In 1 John chapter 5, verse 17, All unrighteousness is sin. Anything that is not righteous, which means unbelief, unfaithfulness, and uh, you know, um, selfishness, and um, hatred, envy, anger, lying, pride, contention, strife, keeping malice, and the bitterness, bearing grudge, lusting after evil things, covetousness, love of money, love of the world. All these are terrible sin, insincerity, unfaithfulness. The stubbornness, disobedience, these are unrighteousness. Confess them and say, Lord, I'm sorry, blasphemy. Repent and promise God no more. I don't know the evil you are into, speaking evil of people, backbiting, murmuring, cursing people, swearing with heaven and earth, worshiping idol, or making idol, or having idol in your heart. All these are terrible sin. And going to native doctors to make sure, or be the native doctor. A sin or going for divination for fine reading or belonging to secret court or open court or marine court or witchcraft court, international or local court or campus court. These are terrible sins. If you are into court, is in if you are going to native doctor, if you're a native doctor, renounce them, gather their property, burn them. I don't know what they're giving you. They gave you rings, mango, and you, you know, clothes, and they gave you, you know, coffee of image of man or of woman, my friend, bond them. Or seven book of book of Moses, bond them. Have nothing to do with all court materials. Have nothing to do with courtism. Renounce them and promise God no more. I don't know the evil you are into. Maybe you are among those that are stealing, picking pockets, stealing from your husband, from your wife, from your parents, and you are stealing from people, breaking home of people. Or you are among those into one chance. Or I'm robber. I'm robbery. You rob people with your, you know, with one chance or whatever. Or you rob and steal from government. Repent and promise God no more. Or maybe you are into, you know, fraud. You do black people, white people. You a dupe. You dupe people, government. You dupe people. My friend, repent and say, Lord, I am sorry. Everything you have stolen and you have done, you know, do people return it, do restitution. I mean, you are well, in fact, don't give us any money you have stolen from people, defrauded people. We don't need it here as an offering, return it back to the owner. I mean, you are ways. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I don't know the evil you are into, such your life. I mean, there are ways. Now is acceptable time. Tomorrow may be too late. 
All those people that are fighting and quarreling, beating their wife, and you know, disobedient to their husband, repent to that and say, Lord, I'm sorry. All this evil, I will do them no more. You are working for people, you don't do the work, and collecting salary. That is fraud. Repent and amend your ways. I don't know the evil. Maybe you are among those people. Now you are into wickedness of God's and pay those working for you. Pay them and God will bless you. Amen your ways. Are you into fornication, adultery, a sin, terrible sin, masturbation? These are wickedness. Homosexual, lesbianism. These are gross wickedness against God, against humanity. Confess them and say, Lord, I am sorry. Such your life. Maybe among those people are involved into, you know, prostitution, private or public prostitution. Or maybe you are among those that are into, you know, abortion. You say the drug, you edit, you, you know, encourage it. My friend, repent today and say no more abortion, no more prostitution, no more encouraging it. I mean, their ways. I don't know that maybe I into you know into ritual killing, hired assassin. If you're a murderer, you are into terrorism, or you are involved into kidnapping and killing. That's why you how you make your money, my friend. That is wickedness. Don't bring such money here. Repent and promise God no more. I don't know the wickedness I into now is acceptable time tomorrow, maybe too late. Such your life, I mean your ways. Are you involved in all these vices, this wickedness? Promise God no more. All those people that you know give bribe and take bribe and extort money from people because of your uniform, because of your office, you extort money. You because you are carrying on, because you are blocking the road, you have office. Nobody passed there without you taking money. Please repent and I mean you are ways. I don't know the wickedness I'm into. All this I'm into smuggling. That is sin. All those people involved into, you know, taking snuff, smoking cigarettes, taking in their hand, cooking, heroin, selling it or buying it, repent. And if you're making your money from such, we don't need it here. Or um, those that take alcoholic drinks, Look how foreign one, one one percent or you know or ten percent, what whichever those people are involved into drinking alcoholic drink, that is sin. Whether white people broke to be a whole drink, look how one or foreign one confess them, stop selling it, stop buying it, stop walking in brewery. I mean you are ways. Now is acceptable time. Tomorrow may be too late. All those people are involved into, you know, the marriage and divorce. That is sin. Or you are into polygamous marriage. You marry, marry, marry. You have three wives, four wives. Your second wife, or third wife, fourth wife. That is sin. The Bible said in the book of Matthew chapter 19 verse 4. Let's look at the Bible. Matthew 19 verse 4. Remember, I'm rounding up. Let's read all these places. Matthew chapter 19 verse 4. And he answered and said unto them. And said unto them. Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning, made them male and female? And verse 5, and said, For this cause shall a man leave, leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they two shall be one flesh. Wherefore, they are no more twin, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. You see it, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Marriage in between a man and a woman until the dead do your part. Do you hear me? So, if you have made a mistake, what do you do? Correct it before it is too late. Did you hear what I said? I mean, you are weak. If you are sent away a first wife, bring her back. If you are the one that, you know, you, you, you run away from your husband. What do you do? Answer me now. Go back to your husband. 
If you're a second wife or third wife, what do you do? Carry your load. Return back to your parents. You have no husband. If you're a man that married them three, what do you do? Remove the second and third one, return your first wife. Marriage is between a man and a woman until they do your part. Amen and amen. There is no more time. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Look at your Bible in First Corinthians chapter six, verse nine. First Corinthians chapter six, reading verse nine. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers, nor the self with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. People living this kind of life shall not enter heaven. I mean, their ways, there is no more time. Such your life. Now is acceptable time. Now is the time of grace. After death, after rapture. You have no time again of grace to repent. Repent now. I don't know the evil you are into. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So, as I round up such your life, you see all these people that type paint their hands and paint their leg and paint their mouth, paint their eyes and paint their body. Stop doing that. You don't need to make up your body at all, at all. All these people that put extra finger, extra eye, extra nose, attachment, weave on, palming, earrings, or bangle, or jewelry. You don't need them. You don't need attachment to weave on. You don't need those things. Those things are the attires of the prostitute. Or maybe you dress, expose your chest, your, amp your armpit, your tummy, expose your body, your nakedness. Cover your body. A Christian is not a seducer. A seducer is not a Christian. I don't know the evil you are into. Cover your body properly well. Young men that do Jericho, rough hair, scattered hair, you play the hair like a woman. My friend, that is abomination. You don't need all those chains and rings. You don't change yourself. Giving the devil to, you know, to draw, to hold you until the last day when he shall throw you to hell. I pray it shall never be your portion. May I remind you, my sisters and brothers who are here, the Bible said in Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 30, when they are spoiled, what shall they do? Do they go after painting, after ornament? Whenever a woman has spoiled, begin to make up. Whenever a woman has spoiled, begin to, begin to dress like a prasta. Like ties. I don't know what they call them. All those, you know, if you bother the hair, you put it like this, cut it like this. My friend, you don't need that at all, at all. Praise the Lord. Now is acceptable time. Tomorrow, maybe too late. You see all these women that are wearing trousers. Women wearing trousers is abomination. Men that are wearing skirt and blouse is abomination. When you dress like, look at how you are. It is abomination. It's a sign that you belong to somewhere. You don't need to dress like that at all, at all. In fact, the Bible said in Deuteronomy 22, verse 5, please open your Bible, let's read. Deuteronomy 22, and read verse 5. The woman shall not wear the which pertaining to a man. Then shall a man put on woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. They are what? And Sammy, those that dress like that are what? Abomination. Let me ask you, abominable people, can they enter heaven? The answer is no. In Revelation 21, look at your Bible. Let's read it. Verse 8. Revelation 21, verse 8. And I read. Verse 8. But the fear for an unbelieving and abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burn with fire and brings to which is the second death. Abominable people, liars, all the immoral people, they can't enter the kingdom of God. Are you convicted? He loves you. Repent. Promise God no more. If you are doing these things. For the Bible said in Proverbs 28 verse 13, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But whoso that confess them and forsake them, that shall have what? Mercy. 
If you want to have the mercy of God, what do you do? Confess your sins, repent of them, tell the Lord, you will do them no more. Show me mercy. He will forgive you. He loves you. He has made a provision for the sins that are past. That's why in Exodus chapter 12, verse 13, he said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the, the blood that was mentioned in the Exodus was the blood of Anema. It covers sin, but it was a symbol of the blood of Jesus, which is to come in the New Testament. That's why in John chapter 1, verse 29, let's read it. And you see the actual blood that washes away our sins. John chapter 1, verse 29. The next day, John said, Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Who is that Lamb? Jesus Christ. His blood is pure. His blood without, is without sin because he did not come in contact with any man. He entered the womb of Mary because he is the creator of Mary. He entered the womb to come out into the world to save the whole world. That's why the Bible said in John chapter 3 verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And in John chapter 19 verse 30, when Jesus shed the blood, he said, It is finished. That's the end of all sacrifice for sin. He said, It is all over. And in John chapter 14 verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, not a way. I'm the way, no other option. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. He is the only way. Jesus is the only way. There is no co-mediator. There is no co-messiah. There is no co-savior. Jesus is the only savior. No wonder he said in John chapter 10 and verse 10b, I come that them I have life, I have it more abundantly. If you come to the Father through Jesus, eternal life shall be yours. Can somebody say amen? amen. In John chapter 8 verse 36, the Bible said, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. And in Matthew chapter 11, 28, Jesus said, Come unto me, not to us. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Will you come? Come. Will you come? Come to the Father through who? Internal life, salvation shall be your portion. Look at the Bible. Please, let's read the Bible. In John chapter 1 verse 12. John chapter 1 and verse 12. But as many as received him, what happened? To them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. As many as received who? What power did they receive? Power of sonship. That power shall be your portion. With that power today, you shall live a glorious, righteous, and holy life in Jesus' name. Remember the Bible said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, what happened is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. When you are in Christ, that shall be transformation. That shall be newness of life. That shall be brokenness. Choosing people. Christianity is not carnality. If one is born again, that shall be spirituality. If one is born again, that shall be brokenness. If there is no reconversion, you can fight. You can be angry. Are you hearing me? In fact, you can react negatively. Uh, I, I saw when the moderator was asking a particular sister question here, the way he answered, I became worried. I said, this kind of answer, they can, this can go more. If, if, if the moderator asks more, he can, become, he can say, ah, what is all this? A Christian is one that is spiritual, broken. He, he attends to matter with all meekness and humility with all righteousness because the life has been transformed you have become a new creature and that's the one that live and depend and trust upon the lord and that's what the bible said Paul the apostle said, by the grace of god i am what i am and i can do all things to christ that threatened me and so as many of you that are here today give your life to jesus 
and have the transformation that make the difference and you shall become a new creation in jesus name are you ready now i'm sammy are you ready now the bible says in romans chapter 10 verse 13 say whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be saved rise up and let us pray rise up everybody confess your sins repent of your sins and call upon him everybody pray everybody everybody i am sorry O lord show me mercy forgive me lord i am i confess all unrighteous thought or words or action or disposition of unfaithfulness or wickedness show me mercy open your mouth and pray no more lying or hatred or anger or stealing or fornication or adultery or of wickedness no more no more show me mercy no more fighting or quarreling or covetousness or pride no more show me mercy everybody pray Pray with all your heart. Pray with all your heart. You will seek me and find me. When you shall search for me with all your heart, with all your heart. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He loves you. He will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Everybody pray. Repent of late coming. Late coming is sin. Uncommitted Christian life, carnality is a life of sinners. Repent and draw closer. Ask the Lord to push you and transform you and make you a Christian indeed. Repent of unfaithfulness, of lies, of exaggeration, of hatred, of envy, of contention, of strife, of bitterness. Repent of love, of money, of love of the world. Repent of evil prepare for the oncoming program ensure purity purity is the key purity blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god you want to see him pray and ask for salvation for purity for sanctification everybody pray call upon him show me mercy save me and sanctify me make me pure lord make me pure oh god sanctify me lord save me deliver me from sin or self or carnality deliver me oh lord everybody pray i am sorry lord i am sorry lord father i am sorry lord Oh Lord, I am sorry, Lord, and sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. Jehovah. Oh Lord. And sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. Jehovah. Oh Lord, I want more time. Sorry, Lord, Jehovah. Oh Lord, eyes closed and head by. If you are truly sorry, just keep your hands up. I want to pray for you. If you are truly sorry and you will not continue in any of this wickedness anymore keep your hands up god will forgive you that person that is into masturbation promise god no more and that lady involved into uh, prostitution and fornication promise god no more the one that commit abortion promise god no more the young man into homosexual repents that's wickedness promise god no more hey, that they commit adultery ask god to show you mercy confess they start smoking and drunkenness and taking in their hand ask for the mercy of god 
ask for the means. See that person also that is a murderer. You keep people. Repent and say, God, I will never try it again. Show me mercy. And that person also that belong to secret court, repent and renounce it and it shall be well with you. Eyes closed and head bow. Keep your hands up. Repent of unfaithfulness to your marriage. Repent and say, God, show me mercy, O oh God. I will not do this evil anymore. No more, you know, fornication, adultery, masturbation, homosexual, lesbianism. I'm praying for you. Keep your hands up. Say this word after me. Almighty God, I come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I confess that I am a sinner. I am very sorry for all my sins. Lord, I promise you, I will never control in them anymore. From today, I confess and I believe that Jesus Christ died for me. He shed his precious blood for me and he was buried. And on the third day, he rose again for my justification. Almighty God, use the blood of Jesus. Wash my sins away from my heart. From today, I reject the devil. I reject all his evil. Jesus Christ, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my personal Savior. Cancel my name in the book of death. Write my name in the book of life. Give me power to sin no more. In Jesus' name we pray. Keep your hands up and pray for you. Sing this song. I surrender. I surrender. All to Jesus. Bless. The Savior, I surrender. I surrender. Sing it again. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. All to Jesus. Bless the Savior. I'm praying for you, a Father in heaven, the God of all spirits, the merciful, the compassionate Father. It is never thy will that any of us should perish. Whatever these ones may have done, known and unknown to them, in your wrath, remember mercy in Jesus' name. Every yoke of power that makes them to do evil, by authority, I break that yoke in Jesus' name. And from this hour, I claim their spirit, their soul, their body for Jesus Christ. Cancel their name in the book of death. Write their name in the book of life. Give them power to sin no more in Jesus' name. My daddy, sanctify their heart. Make their heart pure. Give them grace for holiness, for righteousness in Jesus' name. Can I hear you say amen? Bring down your hands. Let's keep our offering up. Keep your offering up. I want to pray for you. I congratulate you for giving your life to Jesus and ensuring purity for the onward visitation of the Lord to break the yokes. The Lord will surely break the yokes. Keep it up. Father, thank you for this offering of tithe of pledges we are lifting up before you. Sanctify them by the blood of Jesus Christ. My daddy, no man can give above you. As we give to you this hour, Lord, bless our hands. So that wherever we shall play this hand shall prosper. 
and so give to you give us beyond our expectations in jesus name can somebody say amen to that and it is amen in heaven keep it all every 